So you've built a clock made of clocks. Well, that's just unbelievable. Well done, you slash entropy reversed. You've successfully awoken me from my slumber, because after seeing yours, I simply must make one of my own. The first thing we'll need is a square. We'll give it a background color and a border so we can see it, and place two yellow lines inside. The line should be centered and made to be half the width of the square. By shifting the transform origin to the left side and animating the rotation value, we've now created fully functional clock hands. But we don't just need one clock, we need 24 of them. That's at least enough for the first digit. So if we create a container for our clock and make it a six by four grid, we can clone it 23 times and append each copy to our container. And now when we set the rotation angles, all of our clocks move at once, which is fine, but really we need them to move independently and each one to its own specific orientation. At first glance, it would appear there are numerous combinations to keep track of, but if we take a closer look look, there are actually only six active positions plus one neutral position, and each position will have an associated pair of angles. So here's what I'm thinking we need to do. In order to reconstruct any given digit, we need to manually create a list, or array, of all the angle pairs required to create that shape. It's a little awkward, however, to mentally keep track of which numbers result in which angles, so what if instead we map each pair of angles to a symbol? That way, instead of a bunch of random numbers, we could simply recreate each digit visually. But how do we actually use this array of symbols to manipulate our grid of clocks into a number? Well, for any given cell, we need to fetch the corresponding index from the array, and utilizing our character map, we can now determine exactly what angles to apply to each of the two hands inside. So if we simply loop over all of the cells in the grid, we can do that exact same thing Thing for each one. Taking a step back for a moment, we now have logic to create the structure of a digit, as well as logic to manipulate that structure into an actual number. So what else do we need to go from this to a fully functional clock? Well, we definitely need the current time, so let's get the 12 hour time format and ensure each of the three segments are in their two digit form. We can remove any non-numeric characters and convert the resulting value into an array. If we loop over this array, we can create a separate digit for each character and then manipulate that digit into its respective value. And finally, we can create an interval that fetches the latest time once per second and updates each digit accordingly. We should probably round our little clocks and add a gap between each of the three fields. If you liked this video and want to support the channel while leveling up your development skills, check out the sponsor of today's video, Front End Masters. They've got hundreds of courses on the latest frameworks and technologies, all taught by industry-leading experts. Whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned pro, their constantly updated catalog will have plenty to keep you busy. You can start right now using my affiliate link, which helps the channel and gives you access to one of the best learning platforms out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.